Evie is going to talk to us a little bit. Evie can talk about a, a few issues, and she wants to talk about a few issues, and I'm not going to let her. <laughs> Um, but it's important, it's very important. She wants to talk about what it's like to be a lesbian woman who is in prison and, and what that is like, but she also wants to talk about the experience of solitary confinement, and we uh, basically flipped the coin. No. No, we okay, so I'll, get, I'll try to do this quickly. Um, first of all, I think, uh, thank you to Topeka, thank you to Andrea. These kind of gatherings uh, raise attention to issues, and we need to do more of them. I want to say that um, I'm on probation, so I'm not allowed to talk to anybody who's formerly incarcerated. So those who haven't been, <laughs> those who are not formally incarcerated, please Listen. take a picture with me so I can send to my probation officer <laughs> and pretend that I was an event at an event that this is not. Um, and please don't tell anybody that I actually know or speak to these people or they will ship me out in a heartbeat. Um, second, in terms of, I was 60 when I was first incarcerated. My conviction was overturned. I was uh, 64 when I went in a second time. And just to make a slight point, there's just no reason, excuse, for anybody over the age of 60, regardless of their crime, to be in prison. The health, there is no health care in prison. And uh, there's a wonderful uh, woman, Dr. Bree Williams, who did a study out in San Quentin. I just want to mention this. And she studied the men and found a phenomenon called accelerated aging. And the body, when you're 55 in prison, your body is like that of a 77-year-old or a 73-year-old. Um, so we need to get all, it's not that we need to get, uh, we need to get everybody out, but you have to understand that when you walk around prison and see elderly women unable to walk to, um, to walk on the grounds without a cane, and so many people are getting sicker and sicker because of their age in prison. So we need all the support we can to get aging people out of prison. Um, I'm going to talk about solitary confinement, even though I prefer to talk about being a lesbian. Um, <laughs> it was really a hard choice. Now, both times that I was in prison, um, I'm a writer, and I'm, uh, the first thing you want to know is that veterans on your first day of prison tell you what to do and not to do. They basically said, stay under the radar, don't let the warden know your name, don't let an officer know your name, don't, don't, don't. I think it took about 10 minutes for me to screw up, and I think the warden knew my name immediately. Because I came in as a, uh, as a 40 year social activist, work having worked on women's rights, gay rights, civil rights, so I walked into prison and it was a shock. So the first thing inmates told me is don't ask anybody their stories because uh, they don't want to talk about it. So of course I asked everybody their story um, and they realized I wasn't a snitch but that I was a political activist and being old and Jewish and in prison they realized I really was not likely to be a snitch. I was likely to be the political activist I said I was. And um, people but you, I ha they were watching me in both prisons because you are not allowed to incite riots and talking about cases meant the possibility of inciting a riot. And they knew I was talking to people about their cases. So the only way for me to get around it was to take a job on the yard uh, walking around the track. That was an outdoor rec job paying 12 cents an hour. And what women would do is they would walk with me around the track and tell me their stories. And then I'd get off the track, write notes down, and then when i get back on the track, I'd, another woman would join me, and so we didn't look as suspicious even though we all knew what I was doing. So, um, and by the way, in order to have the track job, I had to be willing to do what was on the track, which was to pick up goose, goose shit. shit. <laughs> so, because there was as many geese in prison as there were inmates, 1,100, and for some reason, their favorite place to take a crap was the, the place I chose to have a job, the track. Um, the, um, 
I wrote my stories, I sent them snail mail to my website, and a friend on the outdoor posted it. But something happened that caused me to email a story. We, had a, we didn't have doctors and uh, nurses at prison, we had PAs who were barely spoke English, and I don't think they uh, knew anything. So we had one PA that whether you came in with cancer, a headache, your, peer, your broken leg, no matter what it was, he said the same thing to all women. You're fat, walk on the track, drink water. Um, so, one, so one woman walked in and said, I'm in serious pain, and he gave her the fat speech, and two weeks later her gallbladder burst and she died. And when I found out this story, in addition to other bad medical stories, I wrote it, and I was so pissed. And I was a month away from getting out of prison. I didn't care. I sent an email so that we'd get posted. An hour after it was posted, I was shackled and sent to segregated housing, which is solitary confinement. And I was told I was going to be there past my exit date and they were gonna show me who's boss and that you do not write about an officer without paying consequences. Now you have to understand there are 80,000 people in solitary confinement every day in this country. And we must end solitary confinement. That's the second thing we must do. We must vocally end it. It is, it, we are sent to prison because we went to trial uh, or we pled guilty and there was some order with which, whether it was right or wrong, we went to prison. Solitary confinement is a prison within a prison, led by four officers who, who are accountable to no one and can treat you in a way that's unacceptable. And their lack of account, and it's a power, it, it's as much of a power game as rape is. And it's misused and people die, and I can tell you today, having been in solitary confinement, I am physically, mentally, and emotionally not the same person, and I will never recover from that experience because it was that bad. It's not, you know, you, I can describe, I can just tell you that you're permitted, you're sitting in a place with 60 women who are screaming all day, get me the fuck out of here. And when I say screaming, I mean screaming all day. And you are, if you don't have stress from being um, locked in a room, if you don't have stress from guards giving you one roll of toilet paper, or, or, and, and when you ask for a second one, especially as an elder person with stomach and colon issues, they think it's funny not to give you a roll of toilet paper. They think it's funny not to give you a pad and so you bleed and then they call you a pig. They think it's funny not to pass you a book to read. So imagine trying to sit in a place with nothing. You can't text, you can't read a book, you can't watch TV, you can't go anywhere. So you're watching women lose their minds. I'm watch I watched my cellmate lose her mind to a point that I thought she was gonna commit suicide. So I will tell you that it was, even though I didn't actively consider suicide, while I was in solitary confinement, it would have been just fine if I woke up dead. And the ramifications of that is that even after prison, people take that experience of solitary confinement and you, you walk around and you think some days when you're homeless and jobless, it's really okay if I just don't wake up. That's okay. I've really had enough of this life. That experience was awful. They permit you three showers, and I tell this story so you understand how humiliating it is. You want to keep clean in prison, and the way that you take a shower, if you're only getting three showers and you get to go outside, and I was in Florida during my second incarceration, so if you did go outside, it was sweltering heat. You come back in, you want to take a shower. There's no shower in your cell. There's only a sink and a toilet, tiny, tiny sink. So you put a towel down, you get naked in front of your cellmate. Officers can walk by, you're not allowed to cover the small window. And you take 
50 cups of water just to get yourself a tiny bit wet. And if you want to wash your hair, it's going to take you about two hours. And you wash yourself quickly. And since there's no really back, these are old, old, old facilities. So all the, there's one drain. It doesn't go down the drain. So you're flooding your cell. So you're going to take a shower. You're going to pour 50 cups of water. You're going to wash yourself quickly. You're humiliated because you're standing naked. And at 64, I'm not that pretty a sight for anybody. So, um, gorgeous. and I. You're gorgeous, everybody. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't feel comfortable being naked. Has she seen me? <laughs> okay. <laughs>